everybody, welcome back to Samsung in a Minute, the channel that trains you on your Samsung Galaxy devices in two minutes or less. Today's topic is talking about properly backing up your photos and the best way to get it done. So today we will be talking about Google Photos. Google Photos is a free service or cloud that you're able to use in easy access to any of your photos across any device, your laptop, computer, and cell phones. So first open up the Google folder then go inside of Google Photos. Now inside of here on the very top left-hand side, click those three little lines and then go down to settings. Inside of here, you wanna go on the very top where it says backup and sync. So first off, make sure that you are logged into the correct Gmail. So this way they're not going to a different Gmail that you wouldn't use in the future. Now there is no rhyme or reason to buy more storage because underneath here, underneath the upload size, there is two options. The first one is the original sizes of these images and you only have 5.6 gigs left, but you wanna choose this option here, which is the free unlimited storage at high quality. Quality. You still get great visual quality at a reduced file size. Now, really, most people just want to be able to revisit those photos. And when you upload these images to Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, they're already getting to a smaller size as it is. Now, underneath here, just to look at some more uh, settings, make sure that underneath photos, it is turned on for cellular data backup. That means that at any given point in time, you take a photo, give it just a couple minutes, and it's going to upload the photo automatically and you can do the same thing with your videos but this will take just a little bit more data so make sure that your cellular data is a pretty high number or unlimited so for me I have mine turned off which means that once I get home or to anywhere that has Wi-Fi then it'll back up my videos via Wi-Fi <laughs> Today I'm gonna to show you one setting to change that'll make your Samsung Galaxy device operate just a little bit faster. And trust me, the moment you make one change to this one phone that you're using right now, every phone after this, you'll also make this change because you'll see a noticeable difference. The first thing you wanna do is pull down the notification panel, click on the settings icon, and scroll all the way down to about phone. Now what we're about to do is unlock the developer options, but if you don't have your developer options unlocked yet, you wanna go inside of about phone, click on software information and click on build the number seven times. Now, once you click on that build the number seven times, you'll notice that it would unlock build number. Unless if you have a lock on your phone, you'll have to type in that code really fast. Now, once you've unlocked it, you can go back over into your main settings page and underneath about phone, click on developer options. So now that this is unlocked, you wanna scroll down and you're gonna find the area here that says animation scale. So originally these ones are set at 1x. Now what's happening is that you're gonna see that there is a little transition scale kind of happening. So let's say that I move this over into two. So if you see how slow this kind of popped up right here, and even if I go to 10, you can kind of see how slow this is happening. Well, there's an animation that's happening with the stock number of one. But if you put it down to 0.5, you'll notice that it goes super fast. And even though it's just a little, you know, half second quicker, you'll see a pretty big difference, you know, anytime that you use any phone. So this is a way to speed it up when you go from screen to screen to screen. Now, I don't suggest putting this down all the way down to zero because what happens is if you were to press and hold, you see this little bouncing animation that's happening. Uh, you'll actually take away some of these little bouncing animations and you might take away from some of the things that, you know, pops up right here. So just make sure that you put all of it down to 0.5. So with those three different transition windows, just put all of these to 0.5x and now you've made your Samsung phone just a little bit quicker. <laughs> Today's topic is talking about customizing your Google search bar widget. So first off, if for some reason you don't see the Google search bar widget, press and hold anywhere on the screen and then click on widgets. After that, search for Google and you're going to basically drag and drop this onto your screen. Now, once you have this one up on the screen, click on that little G right over there. On the bottom right hand side, click on more. And then right over here, you can see the option for customize widget. So underneath here, this is how you're able to change what your Google or the icon looks like. So if you like Google spelled out or just the letter G. And once you're done, hit on close. The next circle over here is showing how you want it to look. If you want it to be more rectangular or more rounded, again, once you're finished, click on close. 
this is where you can change the color. So if you want your uh, little Google button over there to be multiple colors, if you want it to be gray or kind of that black and white, or you can choose your own fill color. So as you go through here, you can just kind of change how you want it to look with the different colors uh, and then also the darknesses and everything else. Again, when you're finished, click on close and click on close one more time. This very last one is talking about the transparency and how see-through you want it to be. So this one is fully full and this one is see-through. And then when you're done with there, click on done and right up over here, when you're completely finished, this done button will get it done and saved and now you can see what it looks like. <laughs> So naturally you might go inside of your phone, go inside of contacts and try to manage things from there. The place you really want to go is underneath your applications, go inside of contacts. Now underneath contacts, there's a couple things to look at. First off on the top left hand side, your menu button over here, it'll show you how many contacts you have total and you can also view all of them if you have it selected. So if you're looking at one of these and it's really not showing you all of your contacts, that's just because you're not selecting the one that has all of your contacts stored. Now, if you like to move and change and manage how these are looking, scroll down to where it says manage contacts. Now inside of here, there is a couple things you wanna look at. The first one is default storage location. Every single time that you add in a phone number or contact to your phone, where do you want it to be stored? Make sure you select the correct Gmail and then you can move on. Up here, you can go to sync contacts. So there are some of these you don't need to sync and some of them that are important. So just make sure that the ones that are important are turned on. Underneath that, you can go to move contacts. Now this could be something that's brand new to the Samsung Galaxy Note 10, but you'll see something very similar with this with any phone running on Android 9. So let's say that you wanted to move your contacts from your phone and then you're gonna hit on done and you want it to go to your Gmail. That is really all you have to do. Hit on the move and it's done and complete. Now, if you don't have move contacts, you might have this option here, which is import export contacts. And this is where you're able to export your contacts uh, basically to your SIM card or to a V card. And then you can import them again onto your SIM card or your Gmail. Now, the last thing you can do is if you have a lot of contacts that are pretty much the same names, same phone numbers, you're able to get them merged up, go through and select them. And then now you're gonna make sure that from here here on out, you have everything backed up. Every single name and phone number is now going to the correct and proper location. Today's topic is talking about properly setting up your fingerprint on the Galaxy S10 series as well as the Galaxy Note 10s. Now what you want to do is pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon and scroll down to biometrics and security. Now inside of here, this is where you want to choose fingerprints. You want to type in your code if you have one set up. Once inside, it tells you to scan your fingerprint. So first off, what I would also suggest is holding it the exact way you would when you unlock your phone for the first three times. Then after that, go through and actually rotate the phone so this way it's able to get multiple different angles of not only the thumb, but another way for you to unlock your device. I even go through and set the phone on a table upside down because you never know when you're showing off your phone to a friend or family member and you need to unlock your phone. Done with this one, you're able to add in another. But the best thing to do here is to add in the name. So this one is referred to as right because I did set up my right thumb. Now there is one more little trick I wanna show you. So this one was only set up with my right thumb. So check this out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and hit on remove. I'm gonna go right back in. I'm gonna add in a fingerprint, but this time a profile of me, uh, which means that you're able to go left, right, left, right. So you don't only have to set it up with one Fingerprint could be to the point where uh, it's gonna be one for me, there's gonna be one for a spouse. The nice thing about it is that underneath one profile, this one right here is going to say, uh, let's put in Jimmy. And the perfect amazing thing about it is that as I go through, I can now unlock it with my right thumb and now let's go through and I can unlock it with my left thumb. Simple, easy, and fast. <laughs> Yeah. 
today's topic is talking about the side key settings on the Galaxy Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus. Now, the reason why this is referred to as the side key is because some might reference this as the power key and some might reference this as the Bixby button. So Samsung switched it over into side key settings. Now, there is three different ways of getting inside of these settings. The first way is by pressing and holding on the button and then clicking on side key settings on the very bottom. The next way is by pulling down the notifications panel and clicking on the power icon, which brings you over inside of your little power uh, menu, which again brings you inside of the side key settings. And the last way, which is the longer way, is going inside of your settings, going down to the advanced features, and then clicking on side key. Now, once inside of here, you're able to turn on or off the double press, which a lot of people might use this one to quick launch camera, which is a fast way to open up your camera by pressing the button twice. Another way you can do that is by pressing it twice. You can open up Bixby or you can open up really any other application. So once you have this one options uh, turned on, you're able to go through and open any application pre-installed or also downloaded. Now for me, I take a lot of photos, I take a lot of videos, and so I'd like to have that option there. Right here, you also have the option of what happens when you do a press and hold. Underneath here, you can either do Wake Bixby or the Power Off menu, which most of everybody is used to doing a press and hold, bringing up the Power Off menu, which is the restart power and everything else. But you are able to switch it over into Bixby if you want it. So that is pretty much it. There is one little area down here that'll teach you how you can turn off your phone, which I also did show that just a little bit earlier. Uh, so you can do it with your buttons and also through Bixby. But really, this video is talking about setting up what happens when you press and hold or double press your side key button. Today we're going to talk about turning off a feature inside your camera, which is called pictures as previewed. Now originally out of the box, this one is turned on and basically all it's talking about is saving selfies as they appear in the preview without flipping them. But there is one issue when it comes to flipping this photo or not flipping the photo. First off, let me show you what it looks like when you already have the phone stock. So right now I'm wearing a Samsung shirt and you can see the word Samsung. I'm gonna take a picture. And once we took that photo, now I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So you can see the word Samsung, it's spelled backwards. To me, it's a little distracting personally. And sometimes I just laugh when people take selfies and I'm like, why do you have everything in reverse? So one of the things that I do suggest, which is also the topic of this video, is just go inside of your camera settings, go to the very bottom and turn off pictures as previewed. And here is why. Now I'm gonna do a very similar photo. took the picture and let's see now what it looks like. Let me know which one you feel that you like just a little bit more. Uh, now you can see that the word Samsung is spelled out and it's not as distracting as this. So I think my face here says it. It's pretty crazy, pretty weird. Don't know what's going on. Why is this flipped? And this one is just me like being, hey, I'm goofy. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about this setting or feature here that is called go to websites. Now this is inside of the gallery and the thing I love about this setting or feature is if at any point in time you take a screenshot, it takes you directly over to the source. So if you need to purchase something for the house, maybe a toy for something, you know, maybe for Christmas or maybe this simple ingredients list here that has a ton of different ingredients that I used last week when the chiefs played. So I make a crock pot meal every Sunday and so I always take a screenshot of what I want to make and maybe I I needed to somehow try to find that same website, the same source to kind of tell me how to make something. So this is where you want to go inside of your gallery and just make sure you're in your main portion of the gallery application. So again, go inside of gallery, top right hand side, go inside of settings. And then this is where you want to toggle on this feature. Now, if this one was turned off and you took a screenshot of your ingredients list, you now don't know where this came from. You don't know exactly all of the steps, what you need to do to do whatever you're trying to make. But if you go through and you go through the settings, you actually turn on go to websites. Now, any point in time you take a screenshot, you'll be able to go right back to that exact original source. So you know exactly where to buy something or how to cook something. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah.
Today's video, we're gonna talk about how you're able to unlock your Samsung Galaxy Note 10 with the press of the S Pen button. Now, this setting might not be for everybody if you're afraid of somebody getting into your phone, but because this one is one that you're able to unlock with the S Pen, usually that means you're within the vicinity or close area of your phone. Because how this works is let's first go into the settings and then I'll show you kind of what's happening. If you go inside of your settings, you're gonna scroll down to where it says advanced features. Now underneath advanced features, you're gonna to go to the very top where it says S Pen. And then underneath S Pen, it's the second one down, which says unlock with S Pen remote. So it says right here, if your phone locks while you're using your S Pen, just press the button to unlock it. So it's really talking about if your screen times out, not really if you walk away, but if you do walk away, maybe you're getting popcorn out of the microwave, you're changing the channel on the TV or something happens, then if your phone kind of turns off with you having the S Pen out, you're able to unlock it. So if I go inside of settings really fast, and let's say we do the screen timeout to 15 seconds, and if I don't touch this phone, within 15 seconds, it will turn off. Now with the screen that is timed out, if I press on the S Pen button, it's going to unlock for me so I don't have to go through all the different credentials. Now you might also be asking yourself what happens if the S Pen is in there uh, and then the phone screen was off and then maybe you you know, took off the S Pen. It's, it's really looking at if you were using the S Pen. So I can't get into my phone here um, just by pressing the button or even if I try to go through and it still makes me have to put in my pin and everything else. It just means that as you were holding onto the S Pen, your screen timed out, which means you're close within range and you still have the S Pen, so you're going to be coming right on back. That is how you're able to unlock the Galaxy Note 10 with the S Pen. And if it's for you, it's kind of up to you. I like this feature to be turned on because if I am walking away just to grab something from the kitchen, I come back, I don't have to hit credentials, I hit the S Pen button, boom, I am in. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about what to do and why some of your camera settings could be grayed out. So I got this question asked actually yesterday uh, and it happens almost monthly and they state, hey, I'm going through my camera settings, but some of these things are grayed out and I can't toggle it. So the first thing I do want to mention is make sure that when you're inside of your camera, go underneath the normal photo mode. If you're inside a video or live focus or really anything, you're going to notice that some of those settings is not able to be changed or toggled. And so they're going to be grayed out. So the first thing to do is make sure you're inside of photo. Now underneath photo, now you can go inside your settings and now you have all the options here that you're able to use and toggle and change. Now, there is a couple other ways that some of these could be toggled or, or I should say grayed out. So like tracking autofocus would gray out video stabilization. And so, you know, if you don't want to go through all of these things to kind of figure out what is the culprit and what is making a few things grayed out, all you'd have to do is just go to the very bottom and reset the settings. And then this way, once everything is reset, you can even see this little dot over here for video, letting you know that there could be an update or a change with this one. Uh, the only thing that has happened is everything kind of went back to normal, which is kind of what you're looking for. Cause sometimes it could even be this one here that grayed out everything else. And you don't want to go through all the little nitpicky, small baby, tiny things. Uh, but first off, just make sure that you're inside of photo, just to make sure that when you go inside settings, everything is there for you to do. Cause again, when you go inside of here underneath the video, you're going to notice that some of these will be grayed out. So first off, go inside of photo. Uh, if this doesn't work and you still see things are grayed out, just go to the very bottom and reset the settings. So I hope that you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to hit on subscribe. Subscribe right over here in the very bottom left-hand side. If you like this video, you're probably gonna like this video as well. And other than that, I'll see you guys later. Famous number one, desirable Out of what I want, when I want, and how I want it Leave you with the one in the air, that's how I roll I got tons of